the border. The boy lay quietly in the dark. He was listening. Next door, the boarder was making the sounds of preparing for bed. The boy could hear him brush his teeth, gargle, and then splash water onto his face. The sounds made the boy grit his teeth. He hated the boarder. The two of them shared the upstairs floor of the house. It was a small house in the poor area of town. The boy's parents had taken the boarder in to add his rent to their meager income. Before, the boy had had the upstairs to himself. The extra bedroom had been his own playroom. Now he was kept in a small space. In the next room, the boarder was getting his bed ready for the night. The boy heard him plump the pillows. Then he heard the creak of the old bed springs as the boarder lay down. The boy wondered if the boarder knew how well he could be heard, how much the boy knew about every move he made. The sound of the light switch being flicked off came through the thin walls. Now, the boy knew the boarder was lying in the dark, too, listening for him. It was a waiting game. The boy knew the boarder would be going out tonight. For the last month, he had known about the Friday night journeys. This night, the boy planned to follow the boarder to wherever it was that he went. The boy lay perfectly still in his bed. He had learned how to be very quiet. It bothered him to think the boarder could hear him as he could hear the boarder. So, he had begun to walk softly and creep slowly into bed and do everything quietly, like a cat. The boarder didn't know how much the boy could hear from his room. But no sound came from the boarder's room now, except the muffled sound of snoring. The boy hated that snoring, just as he hated every other thing about the boarder. He hated his snickering laugh and the way the boarder looked at his mother at the breakfast table. He despised his chores of shining the boarder's shoes and going on errands for him. Most of all, he hated the boarder's money, which his parents needed so much. The money was the reason the boy lay awake in bed. No one knew how the boarder got his money. No one knew how he spent his days away from the house. No one asked questions because the rent money was always there, fully paid and in advance. The boy lay in the dark and struggled to keep his eyes open. Tonight, he was going to follow the boarder and find out his secret. The seconds of time ticked by in the boy's mind as he lay waiting. He knew the boarder would pretend to sleep like this at first, but the time was drawing near now for him to make his move. The boy waited in silent darkness. Then, from the next room, came the slow creaking of springs. The boy raised his head to hear better. The springs creaked again as the boarder's weight crushed against them. Then they were quiet. Now the boy knew that the boarder was preparing for his journey. He would be slipping into his clothes in the dark, pulling on his rubber-soled shoes. The boy slipped out of bed and reached for his own clothes. He didn't make a sound as he dressed himself and put on his sneakers. He tiptoed up to the window in his room and pressed himself against the wall. He was ready. The window in the boarder's room slid open with a slight scratching noise of wood against wood. The boy stared sideways out his window. He watched as two legs quietly and carefully picked their way across the small balcony outside the window. The legs disappeared. For a few seconds, the boy heard no sound. Then there was a dull thud on the ceiling above him. The boarder had gotten up onto the roof. Moving quietly like the boarder, the boy slid open his own window. He swung his body over the sill and onto the small balcony. He knew he was taking a chance of the boarder seeing him, but he knew if he waited too long, the boarder might be out of sight. The boy climbed the drainage pipe up to the roof as the boarder had done before him. He slowly raised his eyes to the level of the roof. Standing twenty feet away and staring across the rooftops was the boarder. The boy could see his eager expression on his face. He could also see the shiny hook hanging from his belt and the coil of thick rope hung over his shoulder. The boy lowered his head below the rooftop. Then he heard the boarder move across the roof. He peeked out again over the roof. The boarder had jumped from their house to the next one. The roofs were only four feet apart because the houses were built so close to each other in this neighborhood. The boy stood. The boy saw the boarder walk across that roof and then jump to the next house. It was a dark night. The moon was hidden by clouds. The boy hoisted himself up onto the roof and crept over to the chimney. Three houses away, he could see the boarder walking steadily east. 
He knew he had to follow the border fast enough to keep up with him, but slowly enough not to be seen. The boy came to the space between their house and the next one. The cement walkway between the two houses stared up at him from forty feet below. He felt sick for a moment, then he leapt across the next roof. As he landed, he saw the border turn around from three houses away. The boy flattened himself against the tar roof. He watched as the border paused, searching the darkness for the source of the sound he had heard. But the border couldn't see the boy's body pressed up against the roof. He went on, jumping to the next roof to the east. The boy made his next jump more quietly, and the border didn't turn around. It became like a game of leapfrog between them, the border jumping, then the boy jumping, three houses behind him. The boy learned not to look down at the black, gaping spaces between the roofs. His face, too, took on an expression of eager excitement. Ahead, the boy could see that they were coming to the end of the, the block of small houses. As the border came to the last house, he turned left and began to cross the roofs going north. The boy knew that these roofs were no longer set apart. They were the roofs of the stores on Main Street, which were built right beside one another. The boy ran softly to a chimney and crouched behind it, resting. The border, too, had stopped. He seemed to be counting the roofs of the connecting buildings with his outstretched hand. Then he moved on down the roofs, walking confidently now. The boy followed slowly, bent low. The roofs were flatter here than they had been on the houses. He followed behind the line of chimneys that stretched out in a row across the roofs. Then suddenly, deliberately, the border stopped in, one of, in front of one of the chimneys. The boy jerked his body to a halt and darted behind the closest chimney. When he peeked around it, he saw the border shrugging off the heavy coil of rope on his shoulder. He picked up the end of the rope and began to wind the coil around the chimney. The boy watched as he worked to make a strong knot in the rope. Then the border picked up the rest of the coil of rope and dropped it down the chimney. After a few seconds, a dull thud came from inside the bricks. The boy sat behind the chimney, watching intently. His mind was in a fever. Now he knew the border's secret. The metal hook from the border's belt flashed in the dull moonlight. The boy watched the border fasten the hook onto the chimney ledge. Then as the moon shone brightly from an opening in the cloudy sky, the boy could see the border slowly descending into the chimney. As the border's head disappeared, the boy moved quickly across the roofs. He came up to the chimney tied round with the border's rope. He sat down and listened. The border's grunts came up from the chimney as he lowered himself down the rope. The boy knew what the border was planning to do. He was looking for an old open fireplace. He could enter into a store, rob it, and return up the chimney by the rope. There would be no chance of a fire burning on such a hot summer's night. The border's grunts disgusted the boy. Now that he knew the border's secret, he hated him even more. He eyed the rope twisted around the chimney. The knot was directly in front of him. He touched the knot. It wasn't a very good one. He began to undo the loose end, thinking of just how stupid the border was. He began to pick at the knot more, thinking of how the border looked at his mother. He began to tug the loose end of the rope through the final tie, thinking of how the border's room used to be his. The knot came undone and the rope started to slip around the chimney. Then suddenly, it disappeared through the top. Seconds later, the boy heard a startled cry from the chimney, followed by a dull thud. The boy sat crouched near the roof. He knew the border had fallen. It sounded as though he landed on the sealed bottom of the chimney. The boy wondered if the border was dead. But then he heard the border's voice, grunting with effort. He listened to the voice for a long time as the border desperately tried to climb back up the chimney. He listened until the border's voice took on a mad sound of panic. Then he ran away. He ran across the store roofs, across the house roofs, jumping from one to another. He reached the roof of his own house and swung himself down the pipe into the small balcony. Quietly, he slipped through the window and shut it. In the still darkness, he dropped his clothes on the floor and stole into bed. It was six years later. Three more boarders had come and gone. The boy was 18 now, and he rented the extra upstairs room himself. 
His parents never asked him where he got the money. He joked that he did night work. One morning, he went down to breakfast as usual. His mother had laid his food and his newspaper waiting for him on the table. She gave him all the attention now that she used to give the boarders. As he sipped his coffee, he picked up the morning paper. He leafed through it, reading the headlines. Then, a small article caught his eye. The boy read it slowly, and the whole time his fingers worked unconsciously, going through the motions of untying a knot. Body found in chimney, September 17th. Yesterday, workmen discovered the remains of a body in an old sealed-off chimney. The coroner on the scene said that the person had been dead for at least five years. Authorities suspect that a cat burglar trying to rob a jewelry store in the building had become stuck in the chimney. Because of the advanced deterioration of the body, no identification could be made. The only possessions found with the body were a steel hook and an old rope. The Jigsaw Puzzle It was on the top shelf of an old bookcase covered with dust and barely visible. Lisa decided she had to find out what it was. Of all the things in the old junk shop, it aroused her curiosity the most. She had looked through old books, prints, and postcards for hours, but nothing had caught her interest. Now the old box, high and out of reach, intrigued her. She looked around for the old man who ran the store, but he had gone into the back room. She saw a stepladder across the room and brought it over to the bookcase. It shook on the uneven floorboards as she climbed to the top step. Lisa patted her hand along the surface of the top shelf, trying to find the box. The dirt was thick and gritty on the board. Then she touched the box. It was made of cardboard, and cardboard was cold and soft from being in a damp room for such a long time. She lifted the box down slowly, trying to steady her balance on the stepladder. As the side of the box reached her eye level, she could read the words. Five hundred pieces. She sat down the box top on the stepladder and climbed down a few steps. Then she blew away some of the dust that had accumulated on the lid, and it billowed up around her, making a dead, musty odor rise. Now she could read a few more words on top of the box. The strangest jigsaw puzzle in the world. There were other words beneath that, but they had been rubbed off the cardboard lid. The big picture on the cover had been curiously damaged. Lisa could make out areas of light and dark. It looked as though the scene might be in a room, but most of the picture had been scratched off the cardboard box, probably by a sharp instrument. The mysterious nature of the jigsaw puzzle made it even more appealing to Lisa. She decided she would buy it. The lid was taped down securely, and that probably meant that all the pieces would be there. As she carefully climbed down the stepladder holding the box in both hands, she smiled to herself. It was quite a find, just the sort of thing she had always hoped to discover while rummaging through second-hand stores. Mr. Tubork, the owner of the store, came out of the back room as she was walking up to the sales desk. He looked curiously at the box when Lisa set it down. And where did you find that? he asked her. Lisa pointed to where she had set up the stepladder. It was on top of that bookcase. You could barely see it from the floor. Well, I've never seen it before, that's for sure, Mr. Tubork said. Can't imagine how you found it. Lisa was more pleased than ever about her find. She felt as though the puzzle had been hiding up there, just waiting for her to discover it. She paid Mr. Tubork the 25 cents he asked for the puzzle, and then he wrapped it carefully in newspapers and gave it to her to take home. It was late on a Saturday afternoon. Lisa lived alone in a small room in an apartment house. She had no plans for Saturday night. Now she decided to spend the whole evening working on her puzzle. She stopped at a delicatessen and brought some meat, bread, and cheese for sandwiches. She would eat while she put the puzzle together. As soon as she had climbed the flight of stairs to her room and put away the groceries, Lisa cleaned off the big table in the center of the room and set the box down on it. The strangest jigsaw puzzle in the world. Lisa read the words again. She wondered what they could mean. How strange could a jigsaw puzzle be? The tape that held the lid down was still strong. Lisa got out a kitchen knife to slice through it. When she lifted the cover off the box, a musty smell came from inside. But the jigsaw pieces looked all in good condition. She picked one up. 
The color was faded, but the picture was clear. She could see the shape of a finger in the piece. It looked like a woman's finger. Lisa sat down and started to lay out the pieces top side up on the large table. As she took them from the box, she sorted out the flat edged pieces from the inside pieces. Every so often, she would recognize something in one of the pieces. She saw some blonde hair, a window pane, a small vase. There was a lot of wood texture in the pieces, plus what looked like wallpaper. Lisa noticed that the wallpaper in the puzzle looked a lot like the wallpaper in her own room. She wondered if it was her wallpaper, and if it was as old as the jigsaw puzzle. It would be an incredible coincidence, but it could be the same. By the time Lisa had all the pieces laid out on the table, it was 6.30. She got up and made herself a sandwich. Already, her back was beginning to hurt a little from leaning over the table, but she couldn't stay away from the puzzle. She went back to the table and set her sandwich down beside her. It was always like that when she did jigsaws. When she started, she couldn't stop until the puzzle was all put together. She began to sort out the edge pieces according to their coloring. There were dark brown pieces, whitish pieces, the wallpaper pieces, and some pieces that seemed to look like glass, perhaps a window. As she slowly ate her sandwich, Lisa pieced the, pieced the border together. When she finished, she knew she had been right about the setting of the picture when she had first seen the puzzle. It was a room. One side of the border was wallpaper. Lisa decided to fill that in first. She was curious about its resemblance to her own wallpaper. She gathered all the pieces together that had the blue and lilac flowered design. As she fit the pieces together, it became clear that the wallpaper in the puzzle was identical to the wallpaper in her room. Lisa glanced back and forth between the puzzle and her wall. It was an exact match. By now it was 8.30. Lisa leaned back in her chair. Her back was stiff. She looked over at her window. The night was black outside. Lisa got up and walked over to the window. And suddenly, she felt uneasy, alone in the apartment. She pulled the white shade over the window. She paced around the room once, trying to think of something else she might do other than finish the puzzle. But nothing else intrigued her. She went back and sat down at the table. Next, she started to fill in the lower right-hand corner. There was a rug and then a chair. The part of the puzzle was very dark. Lisa noticed uneasily that the chair was the same shape as the one sitting in the corner of her room, but the colors didn't seem to exactly match. Her chair was maroon. The one in this puzzle was in the shadows and seemed almost black. Lisa continued to fill in the border toward the middle. There was more wallpaper to finish on top. The left-hand side did turn out to be a window. Through it, a half moon hung in a dark sky, but it was the bottom of the puzzle that was beginning to bother Lisa. As the pieces fell into place, she saw a picture of a pair of legs crossed underneath the table. They were the legs of a young woman. Lisa reached down and ran her hand along one of her legs. Suddenly, she felt as though something was crawling up it, but it must have been her imagination. She stared down at the puzzle. It was almost three quarters done. Only the middle remained. Lisa glanced at the lid to the puzzle box. The strangest jigsaw. <laughs> she shuddered. Lisa leaned back in her chair again. Her back ached. Her neck muscles were tense and strained. She thought about quitting the puzzle. It scared her now. She stood up and stretched, then looked at the puzzle on the table. It looked different from the higher angle. Lisa was shocked by what she saw. Her body began to tremble all over. It was unmistakable. The picture in the puzzle was her own room. The window was placed correctly in relation to the table. The bookcase stood in its exact spot against the wall. Even the carved table legs were the same. Lisa raised her hand to knock the pieces of the puzzle apart. She didn't want to finish the strangest jigsaw puzzle in the world. She didn't want to find out what the hole in the middle of the puzzle might turn out to be. But then she lowered her hand. Perhaps it was n worse not to know. Perhaps it was worse to wait and wonder. Lisa sank back into the chair at the table. She fought off the fear that crept into the sore muscles of her back. Deliberately, piece by piece, she began to fill in the hole in the puzzle. 
she put together a picture of a table on which lay a jigsaw puzzle. This puzzle inside the puzzle was finished, but Lisa couldn't make out what it showed. She pieced together the young woman who was sitting at the table, the young woman who was herself. As she filled in the picture, her own body slowly filled with horror and dread. It was all there in the picture. The vase filled with blue cornflowers, her red cardigan sweater, the wild look of fear in her face. The jigsaw puzzle lay before her, finished except for two adjoining pieces. They were dark pieces, ones she hadn't been able to fit into the area of the window. Lisa looked behind her. The white blind was drawn over her window. With relief, she realized that the puzzle picture was not exactly like her room. It showed the black night sky behind the window pane and a moon shining in it. With trembling hands, Lisa reached for the second to last piece. She dropped it into one of the empty spaces. It seemed to be half a face, but not a human face. She reached for the last piece. She pressed it into the small hole left in the picture. The face was complete. The, win the face in the window. It was horrible. More horrible than anything she'd ever seen or dreamed. Lisa looked at the picture of herself in the puzzle and then back to that face. Then she whirled around. The blind was no longer over her window. The night showed black through the window pane. A half moon hung low in the sky. Lisa screamed. The face. It was there too.